Hello YouTube, this is my video on demonstrating how to add these Molex connectors onto bare speaker cable which will then allow us to upgrade from our old speaker system so the LG HT503 with these uh, plastic clamps that clamp onto um, your bare metal using compression to uh, these proprietary connectors now that Samsung, Sony, Panasonic are all using for their home theater systems now instead. So the, the benefit to these of course is that if you've got the original um, sort of plugs for them, it's all colour coded so you can just plug them straight in. But for the rest of us who are doing this upgrade, we're going to need to do the conversion. So what you will need to acquire are these what are referred to as mini Merlex uh, pin connectors. So it's mini Merlex. Um, so from the UK, I source mine from CPC Farnell. So I will link in the description where I got them from. Elsewhere, we'll just need to search for mini Merlex. Um, so I believe these are 556 five, five, connectors, if you search from the CPC, so they're about 20 pence each. Minimum orders are of 10 on CPC, so it's about £2 odd uh, to get the plastic housing. And then for the metal pin contacts, these are referred to as 5557 five, five, I believe. Again, I might have got those in there wrong way around, but you will need those two numbers anyhow. Um, these are about 10 pence each, unfortunately you have to order a minimum of 100 of these. So it's about £10 for that bag, so you will get through the whole bag of course for this project. Um, but overall, per connector, finished connector, it should cost you about 50p in resources. So it saves you having to buy, you know, the already made cables from uh, people on eBay for about at least £5 each. Because uh, overall it's going to be about £30 for um, cabling, when you know, in reality you can do this for, the, for about £3, you know, if you've got the tools available as well at hand. So I'll just put the finished product to one side. Let's just get the one that we need to still do. So your cable, they might come twisted, might come sort of tinned a bit already. Mine are a bit tinned already. Um, you'll only need about half a centimetre. Um, anything longer is a bit too much and you might find it's, it'll have issues. One's fed through into the Molex pin that um, one, when it's plugged into the socket, the pin's gonna push against the cable and it'll either get jammed so make a difference for moving future or it's going to push the cable back out of its socket break any connection and your continuity with your sound system so that you will have a non-working speaker and you're going to have to rip it all apart and try and figure out where it's gone wrong or just you know, essentially start again so I've got about half a metre on there, that's fine I've got one plastic house on that already, I just need to get some metal pins out So I'm just going to do both at the same time basically, so it helps with these steps, so just get one on, just sleeve it through, so you want it so that the plastic housing on the cable just meets up against the second crimp point on the Molex pins, and I'm just going to use the long nose pliers, uh, just to clamp down on the insulation portion. Um, I don't think I want other tools actually, so uh, long, no long nose needle, nose pliers. Um, these will work along the sound or crimping tool, only because I don't think this crimper tool is the correct one for these small Molex pins. This I think is for something larger. So I'll give us initial folds in the crimp in the um, pin, but it won't crimp properly from what I've experienced so far. Um, so I've got a wire stripper for the start again, cut it off, strip some insulation off, um, some tweezers. Electrical tape, solder, and a soldering iron because uh, we will be bonding these um, just at that point there uh, to make sure these, you know, the continuity is fantastic and it strengthens the connection a bit. Um, heat proof mat for that because I'm working on my TV cabinet at the minute because I don't want to pull the cabinet out of the, out of the cabinet at the minute and a lamp as well just to see what we're doing. So we've got one crimped on for now. Let's get the other one crimped on as well. You know, it's only a basic crimp for now. We're not going to finish off the crimp until it's soldered properly so feed it through just small squeeze on that first crimp in position and then actually what I'll just you do comes from one of the soldering iron it's a USB soldering iron it's a powerful battery bank just at the top of the frame so I'm just going to hold them down the pliers a bit more time to warm up actually whilst it's warming up plastic housing comes with a clip on it um, you might find that some of those will come with a clip perhaps maybe at the top on this side 
these speakers are these sockets sorry aren't compatible with them um clips it'll just prevent it from going any further you know into the socket so we're just going to clip that plastic off so whatever you've got to clip my cutters as such and what i'm going to use basically is there's like the two prongs that have been left behind from that cut i am going to use that as my reference as ground so the ground cable will be getting fed into that side at some point so that for all six cables it's all the same keep the polarity the same way around then when i plug them in so I was holding that down actually, sorry, the pliers because they are soldering now, so that's warmed up. A bit of solder, make sure the light's in good position. Um, it doesn't need much, just a small bit just to help tin the cable a bit and just bond it to the edges of the Rolex paint. That's where it's to mount, there we go, it's going, yep. And then it's bonded, yeah. Next one. That's it as well. Jobs are going on that. That's one side. Again, heat proof mat for this uh, wet surface and burn it. <coughs> just give it a few seconds to cool down. And then we're just going to uh, crimp it now. I'm using the crimping tool. So at the minute with this crimping tool, I think it's meant to have a flat edge here with <coughs> a very small um, dint in it. So that helps to feed the metal cables inwards on itself and crimp. But this one doesn't have it. It's not suited I think for these small pins these are for like bigger larger cables but I am going to use the second one down for now just to fold it in half I'll get half a bit, a bit of a fold going but I'll probably need to finish the fold off completely using the needle nose pliers so so we're getting both uh, pins so let's feed it in clamp it down a bit so it's got a bit of a twist to it but you can see that let's go down to the smaller one just make that twist more definite so Increase the radius on that uh, crimp. Same again on the other. So you probably can get away without using a crimping tool. Just if you've not got the right one, just you know bend it with um, some pliers. And again, it's probably like the desk or something. But again, if it's not your fancy uh, TV cabinet. So I've got some small bends in that. I'm just going to finish them off now. Using any of those pliers. There we go, it's bit, it's just grabbed. Yeah, it's only done one leg, so I'm just the other leg as well. Back that across, you want to be as gentle as you can because you don't want to break any connections at this point, otherwise, it's starting again. So that's one done. I'm just going to crimp the second crimping point where the insulation is. It's already soldered, but I'll just give it a little crimp just to help. Same again on the other cable. Let's finish off the crimp on the insulation. Let's give it a little crimp on the uh, metal contact, and that looks good. So now we're ready to uh, sleeve it into our housing. So I'm just going to start the ground cable again on that end where we've just clipped off the uh, plastic clip. Uh, the orientation it goes in is that this is sort of flat, so the two prongs are flat against your hand. There's some little metal prongs, I don't know if you can make them out, but little metal prongs just uh, on either side of the metal contact. So if that's flat, this is going in the vertical orientation then into the uh, house. Now you can push it in one way, if it you know, it doesn't really feel like it's budging any further, then just rotate your, your cable 180 degrees and just try it that orientation and you, that, you'll find it just goes in nicely then it clicks. It will come back out. So same again on the other one. So just get your orientation in. One there. Nope. Let's try it the other way. So if it gets stuck, just use your, um, your tweezers and just push it down that hole and pop it out again. Start again. So it gets stuck. We shouldn't really need to force it. It should, even with a small wiggle, it should click. Now if it's if you, if it's mostly there but it's just struggling. Then you don't really want to be exerting too much force on that cable to try and ram it down because you might break that cable contact. So again, your tweezers, just poke it into the hole, pushing against metal contact, just push it up, and again, it's just clicked in place. Then that's nice and solid. And I'm just going to finish it off with a bit of tape, now electrical tape, just to bond it all together. You could maybe use hot glue, but tape's tape. So nice and taut, just tighten that tape around. 
keep giving it a good bond because you want this to sort of hold on for years really and the electrical tip I have found if you get the cheap stuff it doesn't last forever the, the stickiness so make it as tight as you can for now and it should last for a long time give it a few wraps there we go that's nice and tight so again it'll, it'll, it should you know the cable should basically last a good few tugs then for me to unplug the system a few times before I redo it And that is now one cable that's you know ready to go into our new home theater system and again what i found is because i've, I've got the ends where i've got the two pin like the two you know broken tabs on the side to reference my ground because because i've got the white electrical tape on it's not so easy for me to tell which one is the ground going off the cabling and you know these could get twisted in the tip itself so i know that's still ground so i'll plug this in i'll have ground on the left as a reference for all these speaker cables uh speaker sockets and what you'll find you'll just need to give it a little wiggle and it will seat in place perfectly fine so i've done most of them a few more to go it, i know it's probably going to take about an hour to get all these done properly if you want to do it as i've done it with the soldering iron but this will work as a method going from camping tools to these mini molex connectors all right well thanks for watching any questions please pop them in the comments and by all means i'll assist as much as i can